The top stories tonight in Y News. Metro Manila will shift back to enhanced community quarantine from August 6 to 20 in a bid to prevent the sp spread of the COVID-19 Delta variant. ACQ hit residents to receive cash aid from the government. COVID-19 vaccination in Metro Manila to continue during the ECQ period. The Department of Health says there is no community transmission yet of the COVID-19 Delta variant in the Philippines. An elderly who received two different COVID-19 vaccine brands in Mandaluyong City is now under observation. President Rodrigo Duterte has ordered the retraction of the termination of the visiting forces agreement between the Philippines and the United States. And Filipino athletes are expected to bag more medals for the Philippines in the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. Good evening, Philippines and the world. We are now reporting live from Cubao, Quezon City. Today is Friday, July 30, 2021. I am heard Lynn Delgado. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the country and in other parts of the world. I'm Angelo Castro III. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media accounts and our website, untvweb.com. I am William Theo. First in the news. Starting Friday next week, Metro Manila will be placed under enhanced community quarantine. The imposition of the strictest community quarantine is in light of the threat posed by the Delta and other highly transmissible variants of COVID-19. Meanwhile, the government also extends the travel restrictions on passengers coming from 10 countries until August 15. Rosa Licons explains why. To prevent hospitals get overwhelmed due to the more transmissible coronavirus Delta variant, President Rodrigo Duterte has approved the recommendation to place the National Capital Region under Enhanced Community Quarantine or ECQ from August 6 to 20, 2021. According to Presidential Spokesperson Harry Roque, the Chief Executive has already directed the Department of Budget and Management to source funds for the cash aid for affected residents. As to how much the assistance will be, the palace official mentioned about 1,000 pesos for each low-income individual or as much as 4,000 pesos per family. Within the said two weeks, the government will impose strict stay-at-home order at the capital and major sectors of the economy will have limited operations. The palace have not provided other details yet on the ECQ reimposition. Pero matapos po ang uh, matinding debate, kinakailangan magkaroon ng desisyon. Masakit na desisyon po natin to dahil alam natin mahirap ang ECQ pero kinakailangan gawin po ito para maiwasan yung kakulangan ng ating mga ICU beds at iba pang hospital requirements kung lolobo po talaga ang kaso dahil nga po sa Delta variant. Malacanang reminded the residents in Metro Manila, there's no need for panic buying since supermarkets and grocery stores will remain open under ECQ. It is up to the local government units to impose quarantine pass. Meanwhile, beginning today until August 5, 2021, NCR is under GCQ with heightened restrictions and additional restraints. Indoor dining and alfresco dining are not allowed and restaurants' operation is limited to takeout and delivery. Personal care services may operate up to 30% of venue or seating capacity as well as outdoor tourist attractions, while indoor sports courts and venues and indoor tourist attractions may not operate. Only virtual religious gatherings are allowed. Only authorized persons outside their residences shall be allowed to travel into and out of NCR Plus area. According to the Duterte administration, through these measures, the government is not expecting surge even there is Delta variant local transmission already in the country. Makikita niyo po na yung ating iniimpose na isang linggo ng GCQ, with heightened and additional restrictions kasama ng dalawang linggong ICQ ay inaasahan nating magre-resulta sa mababang kaso 
ng COVID-19 maski pa nandiyan na po ang Delta variant. Meanwhile, the government also extended the travel restrictions for passengers coming from 10 countries until August 15, 2021, particularly those from India, United Arab Emirates, Indonesia, Malaysia, and Thailand. But Filipinos under the repatriation program of the government, as well as the private sector, are exempted from the travel restrictions. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Millions of workers and billions worth of income are estimated to be affected once the strict quarantine restriction begins next month. A labor group urges the, the government to provide assistance to affected residents while a group of employers seeks an enhanced COVID-19 response. Ray Pelayo reports. The Associated Labor Union Trade Union Congress of the Philippines is now doing an assessment on how the planned ECQ implementation will affect an estimated of 1.8 million workers. As early as now, the group is asking the government for the immediate financial support to sustain the daily needs of ECQ heat residents. Um, the Employers' Confederation of the Philippines, meanwhile, is not in favor of the ECQ reimposition as it will hurt the economy more. Ang uh, estimate nung, uh, nung ano ngayon, nung DTI, uh, dun siya magkakaroon talaga ng, ng two weeks na, na ECQ ulit, Easily 30 billion a day ang mawawala sa tao sumusukwerdo. ECOP suggests that improving programs in testing, contact tracing, and vaccination could help in avoiding the increase in COVID-19 cases amid the presence of Delta variant. They noted that the government has enough facilities to accommodate infected individuals. Presidential Advisor for Entrepreneurship, Joey Concepcion, meanwhile says now is the right time to implement stricter restrictions. This will pave way for the economy to open during the last quarter of the year. If we waited longer, then uh, this Delta variant will be even harder to control. And that's why we felt that uh, we should do it immediately in August. Ray Pelayo, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Meanwhile, the Department of Health or DOH says the Philippines has not yet recorded any community transmission of the more infectious COVID-19 Delta variant. Meanwhile, the DOH believes that the re-imposition of ECQ will slow down the infections in the country. Aiko Miguel explains why. Delta variant cases in the country are still linked to each other, the Department of Health explains. But according to the DOH, COVID-19 response implemented in the country aligns as if there is a community transmission so people will not be complacent. We just need to act as if there is already this type of transmission happening in the country para mas maging uh, cautious tayong lahat, meron tayong extra precaution. But for now, we cannot declare that because we need evidence for us to say that there is really community transmission of the Delta variant. There are currently 216 Delta variant cases in the country. Eight are deaths and six of which are local cases. One of the death cases is from San Nicolas, Ilocos Norte. One from Balanga, Bataan. One from Pandan, Antique. Two from Cordova, Cebu. One from Pandacan, Manila. And two others are returning overseas Filipinos. Five of the death cases are males aged 27 to 78 years old. Three of the death cases are unvaccinated. The DOH assures they will officially announce once there is a concrete evidence that community transmission exists in the country. Atin pang pinag-aaralan yung ating phylogenetic analysis na pinatawag. No? So sa ngayon, nakikita pa rin natin ang pagkaka link ng mga kasong ito sa isa't isa. No? Uh, one case to another and uh, two cases to another. So, nandyan pa rin, nakikita natin. Pero syempre, gusto pa rin natin maghanda. No? Dahil hindi po natin masasabi sa ngayon, dahil hindi naman natin tinetest lahat ng merong sakit na positive sa COVID-19. The DOH is hopeful that COVID-19 transmission will slow down and the COVID-19 transmission be even cut once a hard lockdown is enforced in the country. Nagkaroon ng ganitong desisyon, 
na magkaroon ng additional restrictions for this week and uh, coming weeks uh, we will go into tightened restrictions para lang po we can prevent the delay or we can prevent the further spread and delay no this uh, pagtaas ng kaso dito sa ating bansa kung sa kasakali. Meanwhile, the DOH says because of the fear of getting infected with COVID-19, people seek to get inoculated. Yung scare factor, baka natatakot po yung mga tao at gusto na nila magpabakuna. Uh, ang kasunod naman yan, di ba, siguro nakumbinsin na rin naman sila na nakita nila na ligtas naman yung mga bakuna natin at uh, naintindihan din naman siguro ng ating mga kababayan yung mga lumalabas na ebidensya na talagang protektado naman, ano, nagbibigay proteksyon ang bakunang ito. There are over 400,000 average daily COVID-19 vaccines administered in the country. This is close to the government's target of 500 jabs a day. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. And the Philippines on Friday logged 8,562 new COVID-19 cases, pushing the nationwide tally to 1,580,824. In its latest case bulletin, the Department of Health said the latest tally brought the number of active cases in the country to 61,920. Of these cases, 94% are mild, 1.2% are asymptomatic, 1.49% are moderate, 2.1% are severe, and 1.2% are in critical condition. Two accredited testing laboratories failed to submit data on time. The DOH also reported that 2,854 more patients have recovered from the viral disease, bringing the total number of recoveries to 1,491,182. The death toll, however, climbed to 27,722 with 145 new fatalities. Metro Manila mayors will pursue and even intensify the COVID-19 vaccination despite the implementation of the enhanced community quarantine. Some residents, however, worry about its reimposition. Asher Kadapan Jr. will tell us why. The Metro Manila mayors will waste no time in vaccinating the target population despite restricting public mobility as the two-week enhanced community quarantine will be implemented in the National Capital Region in August 6 to 10. With this, the local government units in the region plan to strategize its actions to efficiently intensify its vaccination process. Metropolitan Manila Development Authority Chairman Benhar Abalos Jr. explains that should they receive the 4 million vaccine supply they are requesting from the national government, they will make sure they are all administered. These vaccinations will be finished in two weeks. PPDT po na mga alkaldiyan. Kasi importante, habang habang Iniisip mo, may ginagawa ka, tuloy-tuloy ang pagbabakuna ng 4 million. Intensified uh, vaccination na gagawin natin. Tinatarget ng Marikina na 20,000 individual minimum a day ang uh, babakunahan natin. 10,000 dito ay inaasahan natin mga second dose na mababakunahan. Para sa ganun, mas sumigit pang dumami ang fully vaccinated. The Metro Manila Council are set to meet tonight to further discuss the appropriate actions amid the battle against COVID-19. Meanwhile, some NCR residents are worried about the implementation of another ECQ, even if the government will provide financial support. Kung mag mag ECQ ba yun? Paano na ulit? Nasa na, ano yung mangyayari sa amin? Buti kung meron kami yung pagkain. Para sa akin siguro, okay lang. Kaya lang, sana naman po, pagka nagkaganon, although na ilalockdown ka, sana naman yung support na po ng government, sana meron. Hati, kasi paano yung mga nagbo-work ng no work, no pay, di ba? Mahirapan na naman. Tapos, yun nga, mahikpit na naman, limitado na naman ang galaw. Kung may ayuda, kasi ayuda naman, pabor lang doon sa mahirap talaga. Eh, paano kami mga nagtatrabaho, di ba? Wala. Some residents, however, start buying food as preparation for the ECQ implementation. Ayun, namili ko ng mga ano, delata. <laughs> ah, mga delata lang naman, tapos manok, ganun. Hindi naman kailangan kasing mamili dun sa amin, maraming tindahan dun sa malapit sa amin. Authorities, on the other hand, appeal to the public to adhere in the health and safety protocols to help ease the quarantine restrictions. 
Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. More COVID-19 vaccines continue to arrive in the Philippines, bringing the country's stock of vaccines to more than 33 million doses. However, at least 25 million doses are still needed to meet the demand for immunization in the Philippines. JP Nunez reports. An additional 1 million doses of Sinovac vaccines from China arrived today at the Nino Aquino International Airport. This brings the total of Sinovac vaccines in the country to 19.5 million doses, 1 million of which are donated by the Chinese government. Health Secretary Francisco Duque III says the additional Sinovac vaccines will be allocated in the national capital region and areas experiencing a surge of COVID-19 cases. Uh, karamihan dito sa NCR, tapos yung uh, mga 60 to 70 percent yan NCR, the rest will be distributed to uh, the surge areas. No? Meanwhile, Chinese ambassador to the Philippines Wang Zilian said that they will donate more vaccine doses to the Philippines. As the Philippines is facing an increase in demand of vaccines, we will donate more and substantively increase supply of vaccines to the Philippines. China and the Philippines are close neighbors that cannot be separated. Majority of the 33.8 million vaccine doses in the country are Sinovac, which came from China. Meanwhile, 415,000 doses of AstraZeneca vaccines donated by the United Kingdom will arrive in the Philippines on Monday, August 2. While 3 million doses of Moderna vaccines through COVAX facility is expected to arrive the following day. Despite the continuous arrival of vaccine supplies, National Task Force against COVID-19 Secretary Carlito Galvez Jr. says there is still huge number of Filipinos who needs to get vaccinated. Yung gap po natin talaga, malaki pa yung gap natin pagkukulang. Meron po tayo na gap na 42.6 million. The gap between supply and demand. And we are expecting to meet uh, the, you know, the demand uh, over the supply ay ma ma makikita po natin sa October pa. NTF against COVID-19 estimates that country needs at least 25 million doses of vaccine shipment to inoculate the majority of the priority group. JP Nunez, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. For those watching our 24-7 live streaming on YouTube, please click the subscribe button you see on your screen and ring the bell for notification. You may also follow us on Facebook. President Rodrigo Duterte has ordered the retraction of the termination of the Visiting Forces Agreement or VFA between the Philippines and the United States. Lea Ilagan reports why. President Rodrigo Duterte has agreed to the new terms of the Visiting Forces Agreement. This is why, according to Department of National Defense Secretary Delphine Lorenzana, the President has decided to recall the termination of the Defense Pact. Lorenzana made the announcement after President Rodrigo Duterte met with Visiting U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin III in Malacanang on Thursday. However, the official cannot provide the other details regarding the president's decision. I don't really know the reason behind the president's uh, decision. I'm not private with the decision making. But one thing is clear uh, the Department of Foreign Affairs and uh, the, our ambassador to uh, the United States have been uh, actually working for this to happen. And uh, maybe the president has been convinced that. Uh, Austin, for his part, welcomed President Rodrigo Duterte's decision to fully restore the VFA. A strong, resilient U.S. Philippine alliance will remain vital to the security, stability, and prosperity of the Indo Pacific. A fully restored VFA will help us achieve that goal together. In a separate statement, Malacanang said the Philippines and the United States made a renewed commitment to strengthen their partnership in various areas of mutual interest. The palace said Duterte and Austin had an open and frank discussion on the status 
and future direction of Philippine-U.S. engagement during a 75-minute courtesy call of the U.S. Defense Secretary on the President. President Duterte last year ordered the abrogation of the VFA, which is anchored in the Philippine-U.S. 1951 Defense Treaty. The treaty outlines the guidelines about the treatment of their troops when visiting the U.S. or the Philippines. The pact also includes provision on visa and passport policies for U.S. troops and the American government's right to retain jurisdiction over its personnel, among others. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Several lawmakers lauded President Duterte's move to retract the suspension of the country's visiting forces agreement with the United States. Meanwhile, a security analyst believes this development will definitely bother China. Arlene Delgado will tell us why. After more than a year of uncertainty, President Rodrigo Duterte has finally decided the visiting forces agreement stays, and some senators are in agreement with the president's move. For Senator Francis Tolentino, it is the correct move as the country celebrates its 75th year of diplomatic relations with the United States amid the current geopolitical tensions in the Indo-Pacific. He adds it shows the strong alliance between the two nations. Meanwhile, Senate President Vicente Soto III calls it a a good move. Last year, Soto, together with his colleagues, raised to the Supreme Court the decision of President Duterte to terminate the agreement, saying that there is a need for the Senate's concurrence in terminating treaties. Meanwhile, Senator Coco Pimentel, who chairs the Senate Committee on Foreign Relations, explains if the VFA will have new terms, it is considered a new treaty, which must be concurred by the Senate. And for Senator Panfilo Lacson, he supports the President's move, whatever concessions there may be, in arriving at the decision, such as vaccine supply or any other reasons. The lawmaker, who is also the Senate Committee on National Defense chairperson, adds the termination of the agreement would have done more harm than good to national security, especially now that incursions in the West Philippine Sea have become aggressive. Meanwhile, for security analysts and international studies expert Professor Romel Banlawi, the retention of the VFA will concern China. According to Banlawi, China doesn't want the United States to use its alliances with Asian nations as part of its containment strategy against them. Definitely, uh, China will raise serious security concern about the uh, withdrawal of the termination of the VFA. At kung magkakaroon man ng U.S. military activities sa Pilipinas, ay ayaw ng China na gamitin ito uh, sa usaping ng pinag-aagawang teritorya sa West Philippines. Harleen Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. President Rodrigo Duterte has designated former Army Chief Lieutenant General Jose Faustino Jr. as the next Chief of Staff of the Armed Forces of the Philippines. He will succeed outgoing AFP Chief of Staff General Cyrilito Sobihana, who will retire tomorrow, Saturday. The palace expressed confidence that General Faustino will continue the peace and development efforts of his predecessors while excessively building up the defense capability. And for the news abroad, Thailand Health Ministry raised the alarm over scarcity of hospital beds as the country recorded the highest tally in a single day since its latest outbreak fueled by the Delta variant. Annie Mancilia gives the details live. Yes, Annie, good evening. Good evening, Marielle. Hospitals in the capital, Bangkok, have the capacity to manage 1,000 new patients a day. According to Thailand's Health Ministry Director General of the Department of Medical Services, Somsak Akasit. Yesterday, a record-breaking 17,669 cases and 165 deaths were reported across the country. 4,000 of these cases were recorded in the capital alone. Authorities are starting to recommend home isolation for milder cases and are working with private hospitals to free up more beds to address the country's dire need of hospital beds. The Director General of Medical Services said intensive care units in big hospitals are over-occupied and medics were moving critical patients from emergency room once the beds are vacated. 
A field hospital was set up in Don Muang International Airport at the onset of the Delta outbreak, where 400 cardboard beds were initially built and has since then had 1,800 makeup cardboard beds in place to address the soaring number of infections. In a recent news conference, Director Akasip candidly said that no matter how much they increase hospital beds, it is not likely enough for the current outbreak. He also said that the country must find a way to flatten the curve. Marielle? Thank you, Annie Mancilia, for that live report. Reports of malicious individuals acting as the Australian Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade, or DFAT, are being made by smart traveler and scam watching, alerting the Australian citizens stuck abroad who may fall prey to their scams. This scammer DFAT group are offering fake flights for Australian citizens to return home through phone calls as well as taking credit card information from potential victims. In response to this, the smart traveler warned the public that the DFAT will never phone requesting payment for flights over phone calls. Meanwhile, the authentic DFAT are scheduling Qantas flights for Australian abroad to return to Australia with the help of smart traveler. Clients considered vulnerable to scams are being assisted to priority flights. Israel has announced that they will be offering COVID-19 booster shots to people over 60 years old. Pasalito Likido will give us the details live. Yes, Pasalito, please go ahead. Mariel, Israel Prime Minister Neftali Bennett announced on Thursday the move to offer a third shot of the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccines to its citizens who are over 60. The booster campaign was launched in the midst of rising Delta variant cases in the country and a reported drop in the efficacy of the COVID-19 vaccines. Here is what the Prime Minister Bennett said in his announcement of the campaign. Therefore, I'd like to update you that the expert committee at the Ministry of Health of Israel officially approved the recommendation of giving a third booster dose of the COVID vaccine to Israeli citizens above the age of 60. He further stated that reality has proven the vaccines are safe and protect against severe morbidity and death. And like the flu vaccine, COVID vaccines will also need to be renewed from time to time. The country carried out one of the world's most successful vaccination campaign early in this year, with now over 50% of its population of 9.3 million vaccinated. Israel will now be the first country to give a third dose of a Western vaccine on a wide scale. Mariel? All right, Joselito Dikido, thank you for that live report. The United States of America wants to encourage more people to get vaccinated in order to boost the vaccination rate and help prevent the spread of COVID-19 in the country. Beverly Saison reports why. In order to boost the vaccination rate in the United States of America, U.S. President Joe Biden is calling on state, territorial, and local governments to provide $100 payments for newly vaccinated Americans. The U.S. Treasury Department also said that the funds will come from the $350 billion aid granted to officials in the country under the American Rescue Plan Act. The Treasury says in the end that it is ready to give technical assistance to state and local governments so that they may use their funds effectively to help increase the vaccination rate. The Treasury also says that it was expanding a tax credit for employers could claim for wages paid to employees. This can be used as a paid time off to get the vaccine or assist in family needs. According to the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, about 69% of the adult population in the country received at least one dose of the COVID-19 vaccine, while 49% of the total population are now fully vaccinated. Beverly Sison, UNTV, News and Rescue, USA. We serve the people. We give glory to God. And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. I am Maria Latoza reporting live from Perth, Australia. Good evening. A vaccinator in Mandaluyong City is currently under probe for giving an elderly resident two different vaccine brands. 
Janis Ingente will give us the details live. Yes, Janis, go ahead. Diego de Mandaluyong City Health Department confirmed the case of a senior citizen who received two different brands of COVID-19 vaccines. The said senior citizen got AstraZeneca vaccine for the first dose and Sinovac vaccine for the second dose. Now the City Health Department is monitoring the condition of the said elderly who is a resident of Mandaluyong. In the first statement issued by the Mandaluyong Disciplinary Committee, the said incident was in an was an inadvertent administration or unintentional. The investigation of the Mandaluyong City Government and the Department of Health on the health worker who vaccinated the elderly is underway. The Mandaluyong City Health Office will see to it that the incident won't happen again. Diego, earlier today, we interviewed over the phone Dr. Alex Santa Maria, a Mandaluyong City Health Officer. Here is his statement. So, nakapag ano pa lang naman ho kami, preliminary ano, uh, meeting po with the nurse and yung aming doctor team leader. Still, we have to finish po yung, ano, yung meeting po no, para investigation, para malaman ho namin, para in the future po it won't happen again. Diego, two cases similar to this one in Mandaluyong City have been recorded in Davao region. To avoid such incident, the Department of Health reminds local governments to use only one brand of COVID-19 vaccine in a particular vaccination site. Here is what DOH spokesperson under Secretary Maria Rosario Vergere said about their advisory. We reiterated our advisory na dapat sa isang vaccination site, isang type of vaccine lang ang ginagamit natin. Hindi pwede tayo na may dalawang types tayo na binibigay because that will lead us to this kind of errors na maaring magka-mix nga po yung naibibigay natin because of too much no at ang dami po talagang taong gusto magpabakuna. So that's one thing that should serve as a lesson for everybody. Let's follow the guidelines. Diego, the health department is planning to provide retraining for vaccinators in, in order to prevent a repeat of this incident in which an individual received two different brands of COVID-19 vaccine. Diego? Thank you, Janice Ingente, reporting live. The Manila local government will launch tomorrow its first ever drive through vaccination. The local government says 100 vehicles can queue at the drive through vaccination given that they are enlisted at the city's online vaccination registration. Marvin Callas reports. The Manila LGU's drive through vaccination answers the problem of its residents soaking wet due to heavy rains and submerged in flood while queuing at the vaccination sites. It is also part of the city's solution to ramp up its vaccination program and address the increasing COVID-19 cases, especially now with the escalating Delta COVID-19 cases in Metro Manila. Oh, ito po yung adjustment na gagawin natin ha? kasi talagang naulan na naulan eh. At ang baha kahit saan, no? ilulusad na Saloneta, ang drive-thru vaccination. Manila Mayor Isko Moreno Dumagoso says only four-wheel vehicles will be allowed to queue at the drive-thru vaccination, where a maximum of four passengers can be vaccinated per vehicle. Huwag kayong pupunta na nakabisikleta. Huwag kayong pupunta na nakamotor. Ha? Kailangan apat na gulong hanggat maari. Kasi nga, naulan. Inalis ko nga kayo doon sa mga baha-baha. O oh, eh, Kayo naman ay nabasa din ng ulan. Ito po, sasakyan. Pwedeng jeep, kotse, o kung ano mang sasakyan na apat ang gulong. The drive through vaccination is located just in front of the Quirino Grandstand beside the free swab testing area. The vaccination will begin on Saturday from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. and vaccinees must be registered online before heading to the area. To register, visit www.manilacovid19vaccine.ph fill out the required information, and wait for confirmation. Yorme also clarified that walk-in clients are not allowed and a strict by-appointment system will be implemented. For some residents, the said project is a big help, especially for those having limited time due to work schedules. Makakatulong po yun, sa, lalo na dahil may mga iba na gusto talaga makapabako na kaya lang nahirapan sa pila. Mas maganda sana kung hindi lang 100 kung 
Kumbaga ano, madagdagan para at least safe din yung mga tao na pupunta sa para magpabakuna. Mabilis siguro, hindi ko pa kasi na naranasan pero palagay ko nakakatulong po yun kasi drive through na siya. Hindi ka na kailangan maghanap ng parking, pipila ka na malayo, ganyan. Kasi nakikita ko mahaba talaga ang pila dito. Aside from the country's capital city, some other LGUs in Metro Manila previously launched their drive through vaccination such as Quezon City, Makati, and Taguig. Marvin Calas, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The Department of Energy calls on Congress to give them additional power. Meanwhile, the Energy Regulatory Commission will release its resolution regarding airing generation companies which extended their unplanned outages last dry season. Nel Maribohok reports. Energy Regulatory Commission Chairperson Agnes De Banadera revealed that they have received the explanations of some generation companies who have shut their power plants down during the dry season in the months of April until June. According to De Banadera, the explanations of generation companies or GENCOS are under validation. On the general uh, allegations, uh, some of them said that, uh, uh, well, I think it's due to the age. Uh, of the plant and uh, some of them did not have any uh, maintenance last year so this time uh, when they're doing their maintenance uh, there are more uh, repairs to be done uh, the other one is uh, they were not able to uh, bring in the uh, technical persons usually from the manufacturers the ERC chairperson said they will release their resolution next month when do we expect the first decision to come out on millions of fines to some of these agents of some of these uh, uh, generators, these plants? This month, Your Honor. According to ERC Resolution Number 10 in 2020, unplanned shutdowns should be resolved within the allowed days of outage. Non-compliant power players may face fines from a minimum of 50,000 pesos to maximum of 50 million pesos. Meanwhile, Department of Energy Secretary Alfonso Cusi asked the lower house to give his department additional power in order for the government to establish its own generation company. So, tama po yun. Kailangan po namin ang tulong ninyo. Himihingi po. That's why we are asking for an amendment in the IPIRA to empower empower DOE to have a teeth for those that are not complying to the policy. Secretary Cusi also appeals to the National Grid Corporation of the Philippines or NGCP to perform its mandate in the energy industry. Again, they are making it a uh, parabubang na parang uh, uh, ginugulo pa. And I would appeal again to uh, NGCP to comply with that because that is a requirement of the industry. The Energy Secretary insists that the NGCP has the responsibility to contract ancillary service. NGCP President Anthony Almeida says they are willing to cooperate with the Energy Department. We are assessing the existing uh, contracts and uh, required capacity in view of the uh, recent clarification made by DOE in their uh, uh, June 25 uh, issuance. We are also waiting for further confirmation and clarification on issues contained in our le letter dated uh, July 15, and uh, we will sit down with uh, DOE. Nel Maribuhok, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. And with only a few Filipino athletes remaining in the Tokyo 2020 Olympics, the Philippine Sports Commission, or PSC, is still optimistic they can bring additional medals for the country. Dante Amento tells us why. Philippine Sports Commission, or PSC, Commissioner Ramon Fernandez says Filipino athlete's morale is uplifted following the historic gold medal win of weightlifter athlete Heidi Lynn Diaz. Golfers Yuka Sasso, Bianca Pagdanganan, Paul Volter, EJ Ubiena, among others, still have the chance for the quest of bagging medals for the country. I still believe they will move on to uh, uh, to play and win some more games for uh, uh, to play for the gold medals. No? And I did not counting our golfers and uh, EJ Ubiena, Ubiena 
and Kaloyulo. Uh, they are still in the hunt for uh, medals uh, in Tokyo. Nesti Pitesio, on the other hand, is scheduled to compete for the semifinals tomorrow in the 57 kilogram women's featherweight boxing. Pitesio, a 29 year old native from Dabao, has only a win away from competing for the additional gold. But currently, she has already secured a bronze medal for the country after beating Yeni Arias Castaneda of Colombia. And I inspire Lalo Sila Martin to. Uh... Uh, perform at the highest level, no? Uh, medyo na motivate sila, uh, na kaya ng Pilipino, no? So um, uh, as I uh, fearlessly forecasted uh, before the Olympics, na magmumultay medal tayo ngayon, and uh, nangyayari na. Meanwhile, Humor Marshall from Zamboanga City also needs one win in the 75 kilogram men's middleweight boxing to secure at least bronze medal. The Philippine Sports Commission believes that the country needs to boost its grassroots programs through sustainable and regular sports activities in different regions to have more chances of gaining medals in the international sports competitions. We can really be at par with the best in the world. No? This was proven by several of our athletes from 2018-2019 when they won in the world uh, championships, no? in the different uh, uh, sports world championships, different federations, no? napakita nila uh, na mananalo tayo. So it's really just a matter, I believe, in choosing our focus sports. No? Dante Amento, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Before we close, we will leave you with the final word, giving glory to God. From the book of Proverbs, chapter 2, verse 6, it says, For the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. Those are the reasons behind the news, July 30, 2021. I am Harleen Delgado. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold, I'm Angelo Castro III. And because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am William Theo. We serve the people. We give glory to God. <laughs>